So this is my little sample piece that I've made for part one. Um, and again, because my camera's tilted slightly, so you can see things a bit more easily. It does look like there's a little bit of a bend in it, but there's not. When I hold it up, you can see those edges are straight. That is something I'm going to be showing you as we uh, work this piece, because it can be quite easy to lose stitches as you're working with the stitch, um, the type, the, the stitch type changes, and um, and the fact that there's an awful lot of stitches. I've just got 41 here. Um, but you're making a blanket, so you're going to, you know, by that, by its very nature, it's going to be a lot of stitches that you're working. So we'll be looking throughout at, um, or I'll be reminding you throughout to um, keep a count of your stitches, make sure you're not losing any. And like I said, I've got 41 stitches here, so it's it's pretty easy for me to just go and have a have a quick count. But you're, you've got more than four times that number. So here's a little tip before we get started. Get yourself some um, safety pins or stitch markers or even just contrast colour yarn and maybe mark every 50 stitches as you work. Pop in a, pop in a um, stitch marker or a safety pin and then you can very quickly count how many 50s you've got rather than having to count all the way through um, and knowing you know, every time having to count 170 odd stitches, it's not fun. So anything to make life a little bit easier, that's a little tip there for you. So we're going to be working each part twice because you're going to have two sections that you're going to join together at the end. So although I've got just a small part here, I am going to be working two of them so that I can show you joining and all the rest of it and when the time comes. I'm going to work through each row with you and talk you through anything to be aware of. Like I said, help you to um, not use, not lose stitches at the end. That's a common, common place to lose your stitches. So we'll have a look at all of those as we go. We're also, as you can see, there's a lot of colour changes in here, which is what is so appealing about it to a lot of us. Um, I'm going to show you how to do the colour changes as we work. Another thing to keep an eye on is um, hook changes. The, ch the hook sizes change um, throughout, depending on what kind of stitch you're working on that particular row. So pay close, close attention on your pattern to that. Um, what I've done with mine is I've gone through and sort of highlighted the hook size um, at each row. The other thing to tell you, if you've watched the tension video, you'll know that I changed my hook sizes for my tension swatches, but just for the ease of keeping to the pattern um, and not confusing matters, I'm just going to go with the hook sizes that are mentioned in the pattern and for part one that's four and a half and and four millimeter hooks so all you need to do if you're using different sizes is maybe just jot down um, the substituted size next to the um, hook sizes on each row as you go okay so that is a lot let's get on and see where we start Right, we're going to start with the larger hook. So whatever hook size is your larger size, I'm using a four and a half millimeter here, which is the same as in the pattern. And if you're working um, with the kit, the original kit for Sunshine and Shadows, we're going to be working with Duck Egg. But don't forget, this is a fantastic project for stash diving. Um, so just, is this is a true DK. It's really easy to swap in different colors. It's not a problem at all. But do, do bear in mind, you've got to do this twice. So maybe... Um, reserve the yarn that you're using until you finish the project or don't if, if it's completely sc scrappy also lovely but we're going to be starting here with duck egg and the four and a half millimeter hook now as I've mentioned you're going to be chaining a lot more than I because I'm just working a small sample piece um, but just as a refresher if you are a beginner let's do a, a little reminder of, of um, what we need to think about when we're chaining um, a hook to uh, chaining a chaining a chain or hooking a chain to start a blanket. Um, my first piece of advice to you would be try not to make that chain too tight. Even though we are working with the larger hook, um, we can tend to pull the chains a little bit too a little bit tight, um, and you end up with a bit of a banana effect across the bottom of your blanket, um, which is to say that it sort of pulls in and it's not easy to block out a very tight starting chain. So if you can see what I'm doing here is I'm just allowing a little bit of play on that yarn to come through those um, chains as I'm working them. 
Okay, so I'm not keeping things very tight like this because the other thing is, is I've got to work into that chain and it's a lot easier if you've got a little bit of uh, space to get your hook through. So try and keep that, uh, not ridiculously loose because you want it to be nice and neat, but you know, relax, relax as you make this chain um, and the chain will reflect your relaxation. It will be nice and loose. Um, again, I'm just gonna revisit that little tip I, again, you know, I've only got a small number of chains, so it's easy enough for me to count them, but you're going to be working an awful lot. So you can consider putting in a um, um, stitch marker or safety pin every 10, 20, 50, whatever you want to do, stitches, so it makes it easier for you to count. Okay, so I'm going to just continue and get to 42 chain for me, 172 for you. And uh, we will meet at the end of that for the next part. Right, I'm just coming to the end now. And um, also a little tip, try to not, it's important that you don't twist your chain as you work it, okay? Because you're gonna work into the chain and it becomes impossible and you don't want a twisted edge. It's not what you want. So try and sort of work that chain all in one go if you can and uh, keep, Keep the right side up and the reverse side down. I'll just show you what that looks like. So the right side is the flat side here that looks like a braid, sort of braided hair. And if I turn it over, you can see the wrong side has got these sort of dashes going down, horizontal lines going down. You can see that, can't you? So don't twist it if you can help it. And if you do have a twist in it, take it back to where the twist is and just kind of redo your chains um, because you need it nice and straight. So once you've got the correct number of chains, we are ready to work the foundation row. Right then, so we're ready to start. We're not changing hook size. We're still sticking with the hook size that we made our chain with. And we're gonna work our foundation row now. Um, and we're gonna work a um, double crochet in every chain across. And again, we're gonna work hard to not twist the chain as we go, okay? So double crochet, again, UK terminology, we skip the chain that's closest to the hook, you can see it's that one there, and we go into the next chain along and we make our first double crochet there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my hook over this right hand side of the chain. So if I hold it upright, you can see it's the right hand side of the chain here. I'm gonna be putting my hook through the, through the chain and over the top of that. Okay, and when I do that, if I angle my hook down just slightly, you will see that I have two strands of yarn going over it. And that is what I'm gonna work all the way along. I'm gonna stick with getting two strands of yarn across the top all the way along just make my double crochet. Okay, so you can see that my first stitch is coming out of this chain here. I'm gonna find the next one along, and I'm gonna put my hook over that right hand um, part of the chain, angle it down slightly, and there it is with the two, two strands of yarn that go across the top. And I'm gonna work all the way along the chain like that, just being careful not to put two into one, so I can see there's one coming out of here. It's made the, the hole in the chain a little larger, so I know I, can't, I don't want to go back in there. Coming along to the next one and, and making sure not to twist the chain. So if you remember, we looked at what is the front side of the chain. It's the flat, okay? And the back side is the raised sort of bumpy bit with the dashes along it. So I'm always gonna work into the front of the chain and I'm just gonna work double crochet all the way along. So I will do that and we'll see what happens when we get to the last stitch. Right, I'm at the very end now, I've got two more to go. So just as before, just working through the chain. And the very last one, it's a little bit messy, a little bit tricky when you get up to that uh, knot, but you can do, you can do it. Under it goes. Now, I've finished that. Let me just put my hook down for a moment and have a look. So you can see that that's all a, a bit curled, um, a little bit wiggly, but don't worry because it will 
straighten out as we work some more rows on it. And if I just untwist it or uncurl it, you can see that it is flat. We've worked everything into the front of the chain. Um, and as we work some more rows, like I said, that will flatten out a little bit. So I'm going to take my hook out because I want to just have a quick word about counting your stitches. Now with double crochet, the easiest way to do that is to count the chain across the top. So let me show you, I've got my needle here. Um, so I'm going to be counting the V's. Can you see the V's of the chain? There's one there, there's one there, and so on. So when I count my stitches, I will count each V. So across the top, one, two, three, four, and so on. So I won't do that now because we've got we we don't have the same number of stitches. But I I want it because I've started and with 41 stitches, I'm going to be working throughout to keep my 41 stitches, and you are going to be working throughout to keep your 171 stitches. So um, do check that you're not losing stitches. Now the place where it's most common to lose stitches is at the, t the beginning uh, or the end of a round, and you can also add them, helpfully. So we'll pay particular attention to each end of the round, uh, round, each end of the rows as we work them. So we've done the first of two rows for this lovely duck egg color. So we're gonna just turn and double crochet all the way back along. So we're going to make one chain and turn. Right, now here's an important piece of information in our pattern. It says the chain does not count as a stitch. That means we disregard that and our first stitch has to go into the very last stitch we made on the row, uh, the row before. Now here's a little tip that I found helped me and still helps me when I'm not sure where that is. So I've gone back to before I've made the chain on the other side of my work. So I've just finished that last stitch. And what I will do sometimes, um, especially if I'm working in the evening, it's a bit uh, the light's a bit dimmer, I'm working with darker yarn, whatever, is I'll just pop my stitch marker through that last stitch I've just made. Okay, I've left it open there, but you know, I'll try not to inflict any injuries. So now I'm going to make my turning chain and turn, and I can see really clearly where I've got to put my hook to start. So if you're not sure, um, pop a stitch marker or a, a paper, um, safety pin, I always want to call them paper clips, a safety pin through, and that's just a handy reminder of where that first stitch needs to go for your double crochet. So if it's not counting as a stitch, um, we work into the last double crochet we made on the previous row, i.e. the first double crochet on this row. All right, so that is a, a good way to make sure you're not skipping a stitch and losing a stitch at the end, okay? So there's a little tip there. So one in there, and it's much easier now because we've got a row in already, um, and making a double crochet into those is a little bit easier than working into a chain. So I'm gonna to work to the end, and I'll see you at the end, because we're gonna change color um, when we get there. Right, now getting to the end of row one, and um, just to show you where that last stitch will sit, you can see the very last V, just V there, and the last stitch is gonna go into that very last V, and I'm gonna pull up a loop, but I'm not gonna finish the stitch because we are now, if I put that down and show you, we are now going to start working with Storm Blue. Again, if you're working the original colorway, we look moving on to Storm Blue, or um, if you're not, it's red, it's time to change color to a, or change yarn to a different color. And this is how we're gonna be working our color changes. So I'm gonna get my Storm Blue, and I'm, all I'm gonna do is, I've just got a cut end there, there's nothing special going on. I'm just going to pull my, a loop of my Storm Blue through the double crochet stitch and finish the stitch with the new color. Okay, so you can see that my um, yarn ends are all sitting off here to the left, and I've now got the new color on my hook. We completed the last pull through of 
yarn with our new colour. So we're now ready to work with Storm Blue. And we're going to start row two. And if you look at your pattern, you will see that means you're going to change your hook size. So I'm going to remove my four and a half millimetre hook from that loop. Put that to one side. And I'm now going to work with my four millimetre hook. And that's going to go into the loop. And we are ready to start um, crocheting. Now, before we do this, I am going to do that little trick I just talked about with the safety pin and there'll be a reason for it that will become clear shortly. I'm going to put that safety pin or a stitch marker if you've got it through the last stitch that we made. Okay, so it's actually through the last loop of the uh, duck egg colour. And I'm just going to leave that there for now. And like I said, the reason for it will become clear shortly. So row two, using st Storm Blue and our four millimetre hook, we're now going to do our three chains. So I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to make three chain. Now the reason we're going to make three chain is if we look at our little sample piece here, you can see that we are using taller stitches, treble stitches. So we need to make um, a, a longer starting chain to get our hook up to the height that it needs to be to make those taller stitches, so hence the three chain. So one, two, and three. And don't worry, things are a little loose, but you, you will easily, they'll tighten up as we work and you can cope with that um, and, and sew ends in a bit, a bit later. So don't worry too much about that. Right, so we've made our three chain and this time our pattern tells us that this counts as a treble. This chain counts as our first stitch. So what we want to do, um, because that's counting as our first stitch, we want to make sure where we make our next stitch, our, our, our next treble, we'll make sure we put that in the right place. So that is why I've marked this stitch here, because I want to miss it. This time I want to miss it. I'm not marking it to say that's where your hook goes. I'm marking it to say do not put your hook here, or we'll end up with one too many stitches. Okay, so I'm going to make my treble, so yarn around the hook, miss the one that I've marked, and come to the next stitch over, and make my treble. Okay, and I can remove that stitch marker in a minute, which I will do. Right, and all we're going to do now is make trebles all the way across, okay, so in each stitch, we'll be making a treble stitch with Storm Blue. So just a reminder, if you're a beginner, that is a UK terminology. So it's yarn around the hook. Hook goes through your next stitch, pull the yarn through. So there's three loops on the hook. Yarn over and through two loops, yarn over and through two loops. So that's one treble crochet done. So I will just carry on now and get to the other end. Right, I'm coming to the end of the row now. Got two more stitches to go. And you will see that the last stitch falls neatly um, into the last stitch there. There's nothing tricky about that. Right, now, because stitches with crochet, they do not sit neatly on top of each other. They're sort of staggered. Let me show you what I mean. Here is our sample piece again. So you can see the storm blue stitches, um, if we take this one here, you can see there's a post here and this stitch sits just to the right of it almost. So it's more like a brick wall um, than just sort of a pillar, isn't it? And that is why it's a bit tricky to know if you've lost or gained a stitch. So again, do give it a count and we count things, we count um, taller stitches like this by counting the posts. So by posts, I mean this part of the stitch, because you can clearly see, can't you? It's easy to see those as individual stitches. So go along and double check your um, stitch count again. Right, we're gonna do another row um, identical to what we've just done. And I'm gonna deploy the safety pin again. And um, just because you'll see that it's just nice if you're getting used to this technique, it's nice to see where to miss in this case. 
rather than where to put your hook. So we're going to do exactly the same as before, which is to say we're going to turn our, turn our work and come back in the other direction. And we're going to start with three chain again. One, two, and three. And that's going to count as our first stitch. You can see that I've marked the last stitch on the other side and I know I'm to miss that. I'm not going to put my hook in there else I will create a stitch. Okay, so missing that stitch and starting my row in the next one along. Oops, didn't go around the hook. Starting the row in the next one along. And again, just making a complete row of treble stitches one in each stitch all the way across okay and things get a little bit different when we get to the end because we have a yet another color change but also just want to show you where the last stitch goes um, on this row so i'll see you at the other end okay i'm coming towards the end of the row and you can see i've got the two very clear um treble stitches here and our beginning chain which beginning three chain sorry which counts as our first treble stitch so i've actually got um three more stitches to work let me show you what i mean so i'm going to go into that stitch that's one and the next treble in the same normal way that's two now the temptation is to look at that and think you're finished it's really easy to do this, and this is um, the place where stitches most get lost. If you look at that, you would be completely forgiven for thinking, "What? Well, that's that done. But if we stop there, we have lost a stitch from our row, and that's going to sort of throw future patterns out, and only going to get worse as we work this <laughs> going up the blanket. We're going to lose stitches left, right, and center. So what we need to do is we need to work our last treble into the top of that three chain that we made. So I'm going to get ready to, to work a treble in the normal way. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to find sort of the top um, chain, if you like. I put my hook through there. Okay, so there's still, it's twisted, but there's two, you can see there's still two um, strands of yarn going over the top of my hook. I'm going to pull through and I've got three loops on the hook as usual. Let me just get that, turn that away and complete my stitch like so. Okay, so my, my last stitch of, of the row um, is going to sit in the top of that three chain from where we started below. Okay, you can always mark that chain with a stitch marker that like we've been doing just as a reminder that you've got to go in there. Whatever you need to do to not forget that little chain at the end is, um, is absolutely fine. Now, I wanted to show you the positioning of that stitch, so I've kind of done the complete stitch, but in actual fact, we're ready to change colours again. So I'm just going to take that last step back, because you know now how we go about our colour changes. We're going to pull through the last stage of the stitch in the new colour. And what I've been meaning to tell you is that you can cut your yarn at this stage. So I've cut my, um, if you look under here, I've got ends. I've got, I still, I don't still have the duck egg attached I'd apologies for that I should have told you it so I'm now moving on to work khaki and we make that change in exactly the same way um, so I'll just pull up a loop of khaki to complete the stitch oh. okay give everything a little pull and we're ready now to work um, our next row which is row four. Okay, so we've got khaki on the hook. We're using, still using um, four millimeter hook. Um, and we're gonna start working a wave stitch or wave pattern um, into our work. And that looks like this. You can see our khaki here is, is we're getting this lovely gentle wave going across the work. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's, it's a really nice effect, isn't it? So we're going to start um, with turning the work and we're going to start in the same way as we did the last uh, two rows, which is to say we're going to start by doing three chain and having that three chain count as our first treble. So one, two and three. 
Okay, and we're going to miss the, miss the stitch at the base, so this is the one that we would have marked, this is the last stitch from the row before, we're not doing that there, we're not doing anything there, sorry, we're going to miss that, and we are going to put a treble into the next stitch over, okay, so we've missed that first one, so we're not creating any extra stitches, alright, so we've now got two treble effectively, our starting three chain and our, our first real treble. We're now going to do two half trebles. If you haven't um, encountered a half treble up to this point, it's a great halfway house between a double crochet and a treble. And create, it's going to help us create our gentle slope downwards. So we're going to put our yarn around the hook as we would with a treble. We're going to put our hook through the work, pull up a loop. We've got three loops on the hook. And we're just going to pull through all three of those. Okay, so there's one less step, if you like, than a treble, which means it's a little bit shorter and will create this lovely slope for us. So we're going to do two of those. That was one, so yarn around the hook, through the work, pull up a loop, and pull the yarn through all three. So two half trebles. So we've currently got two trebles, two half trebles, and we're going to make our stitches um, shorter still by working double crochet and we're going to be working three double crochet. Right now when I, as I start this three double crochet you will know in your pattern there's an asterisk before it and the asterisk before it indicates that this is the beginning of our pattern repeat. So this is the part that we're going to be working all the way across our blanket. Okay this, this repeat and I'm just going to read it out so you know what the repeat is. It's three double crochet, two half treble, three treble, two half treble. Now don't worry, we'll go through that together, but if you're looking at your pattern, that is the repeat, okay? And you are going to make that, that pattern 15 times. So let's show you how it goes. So three double crochet to start with. So there's one, there's two, and there's three. And we've said three double crochet, but that does mean a one-to-one -one stitch. That means we do one double crochet in one stitch, not three in one. That will be indicated really clearly if you need to put more than one stitch into one, one place, okay? So for this, we're putting a one-to-one -one stitch ratio, okay? So three double crochet, two half trebles. So it's those lovely half trebles that we just looked at. And now we're gonna do three treble. Okay, one, two, and three. And we'll finish our repeat with two half treble. So we're coming down again. So I'm gonna just show you what that repeat looks like, what it's done to our pattern. All right, let me take my hook out. So we started with our three double crochet, which is just to the right of my thumb over here. And you can see it's a short, short stitch, so close to close, close to the um, sort of flat to the round of the row before, sorry. And then it starts to increase in height across these two half trebles, and then taller still across the three trebles, sort of like the, the top of the bridge. And then we're going to start coming down the other side again by two half trebles. And when we work our next repeat, we'll get right down to the to the sort of shorter stitches again, and it will create that lovely curve. So one, two, three doubles. This is our second repeat, well, our second working. Can you see it's great? It looks so much like a bridge um, near where I live, in Orwell Bridge, I love it. Um, so it creates this lovely curve Okay, this lovely sort of rolling curve. And um, an easy-ish way to remember it is that all your doubles and trebles are worked in threes and all your half trebles are worked in twos. All right, so I've done, and, and I know I want to sort of increase and decrease. I want to make that wave, don't I? So I'm down at the lowest point, so I need to increase. So in height, so I'm going to do two half trebles. And I've come from the lowest point and I'm trying to get to the highest point, so that means I'm now going to do three trebles. So trebles and doubles are worked in threes and half trebles are worked in twos. And if you can keep that in your head, you won't go far wrong. Okay, so I'm now right at the pinnacle 
of the pattern. That's a good word, isn't it? Pinnacle. And I'm coming down the other side now, so my two half trebles. Okay, and that's completed the um, that next repeat, and that's all I'm going to do all the way along. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to make the last half treble on my last pattern repeat. So for you, this will be um, at the end of 15 repeats. Okay. So that leaves me with seven stitches, and we're going to kind of carry on our pattern all the way up to this last. Um, the last set of trebles. Let me show you what I mean. So I've got my two uh, half trebles there. I'm going to do three double crochet, completely the same. One, two, and three. Two half trebles, again, no different to what the repeat we've been working. Two. And the only change is when we get to the last um, set of trebles and so instead of doing three we're just going to do two and the last one is going to fall um or is going to be made into the top of that starting three chain from the round uh, the row underneath okay so just remember that that starting three chain when it counts as a stitch as it does in our pattern you have to work your end stitch into it that is a really common place i know i keep saying it but it's a really common place to lose stitches and i'm saying this can you tell from bitter experience? <laughs> right, so last stitch goes into the top of that three chain. Okay, so there we have it. Um, we have our wave pattern. Now, obviously, um, wave patterns can be made uh, with different stitches to this, um, but this is our wave pattern with doubles, half trebles, and trebles, and we have completed row four. Um, and again, do pay attention to your stitch numbers, but of course it's a really good indicator if you've got things right, if you're ending up um, with the two trebles at the end, but do, do give things a count, okay? Can't stress that enough, it's awful if you um, realise you've lost stitches and you've got a lot of work to take back. Right, we're going to move straight on now to row five. Now row five is simply um, double crochet all the way across, so the only thing to uh, think about is changing your hook we're going to change our hook up again i've gone back up now to a four and a half millimeter because um the double crochet work if you remember way back at our uh tension swatch the double crochet work is is tighter and smaller stitches so we need to have a bigger hook to kind of even it up throughout i can't even turn the work today look at me right so work is turned Four and a half millimeter hook is in place. One chain. Now we're going back to that not counting as a stitch. That doesn't count as a stitch. So sort of breaking with the tradition we've been working with for the last couple of rows. So it doesn't count as, as a stitch, which means our first stitch is right at the base of that chain. All right. And again, easy peasy place to lose a stitch. So just bear in mind the first and last stitches you just need to be a little bit careful. So I'm just going to go all the way across with uh, double crochet, one double crochet into each stitch across, and we'll see what that looks like at the end. Okay, penultimate, my favourite word, stitch. And don't forget, we've still, we have got to make a stitch into the top of our um, three chain from the row underneath, or we're going to lose a stitch in our work. So through the top, and bring through. Now I'm not going to finish this stitch because patiently waiting in the wings here is Meadow, our last colour change for part one. So I will just pull through with Meadow and we are ready to go on our final little um, stripe. Let me just put that down so you can see how um, the wave stitch is, is finished nicely with that double crochet. It just finishes it finishes it off and evens things out again for us, it's beautiful. Now, if I look at the last piece we're working here in Meadow, we've got wave stitch again, okay? And what we're doing with the wave stitch here is we're sort of filling in the gaps. So where our stitches on um, khaki were really short, we're putting the taller stitches in there and vice versa. So that is really beautiful and creates again, the sort of perspective of hills rolling away into the distance. So let's just have a look and remind ourselves how to make that wave stitch 
for rows um, six and seven. Right, I've turned my work, so I'm ready to begin with meadow. And um, hopefully you've noticed that the, the hook's gone red again, which means I've changed to four millimeter hooks. So do, just as a reminder, do keep an eye on um, the hook sizes that you need as you work the projects, okay? Change them as needed. So we're starting this wave pattern a little differently to how we started the khaki wave pattern, because as I said to you, we're sort of filling in um, the peaks and troughs um, with different stitches. So um, start with one chain, and that's not going to count as a stitch, which means we've got to start right in that little gap at the, or right in the stitch, sorry, at the base of the chain. You can sort of see my finger behind it there, can't you? So we're going to go in here and make two double crochet. Don't worry about all of these ends. We're going to have a look about sewing ends in uh, a little video shortly. But two double crochet. Okay, and now we're going to start our repeat. And it will be a familiar repeat to you. It's just sort of written in a different order. So um, we'll start with our two half treble instead. Okay, so two half treble. And then three treble so you know you you're you know how this goes you've done it it's just you started in a different position or sorry you start with a different stitch but otherwise it's exactly the same so now we've got our three trebles going in we know that our next stitch goes back down to half trebles so two half trebles one and two and then um, three double crochet one two and three so that is our repeat so you can see it, it ends in a different place it begins and ends in a different place but ultimately you know that pattern it's the same pattern isn't it um, it's the wave pattern so as long as you start in the right place um, it's completely the same and actually your repeats on this um, you go all the way to the end. You don't have to count them. You go all the way to the end. And the only thing that's different on the last repeat is you're just missing off the last double crochet. So you should end with two stitches instead of three for your double crochets. I'm going to work along to the end so you can see what I mean um, exactly. But basically, you're repeating that pattern all the way to the end bar one stitch. Bear with me. Let's have a look at what that looks like. So in goes the second half treble. So we're now back down to doubles and you can see we've got two stitches left. So the repeat is almost complete on that last, um, on the last repeat, it's almost a complete set of the stitches, except you're just going to leave off the last double crochet. So you're doing two double crochet at the end instead of three. Okay, so row seven, again, we're going to change to back to the four and a half millimeter hook, turn our work, because again, it is the same as before, which is, so it's the same, sorry, as row five, and that is just a row of double crochet all the way across. So I won't make you sit and watch that. I shall just say, as if by magic, ta-da, wasn't that clever. Right, so I'm at the very last stitch. And um, this is the last stitch of part one. And I'm gonna finish this stitch and I'm gonna just pop it on um, a stitch holder, which is my fancy word for a safety pin, okay? So that is on there, which means that can't undo. That can be held until I'm ready to do part two. Obviously you might wanna move straight on to part two, but if you don't, pop it on a stitch holder and you can see the lovely two wave patterns working beautifully together, um, the khaki and the meadow. And um, that's just such a pretty effect, isn't it? So I'm sort of just gazing at it there. Really pretty effect. You can cut um, the meadow yarn. You're not gonna need that again. And we will get ready to move on to part two. I'm gonna just do a little video about sewing ends in. I know, I know, I'm the worst at it, but, um, 
you know, just if you're not too sure where to sew them, how to sew them, little video on that and you can use that throughout. And we're also going to look in the next part at how to crochet over some of the ends to save you a little bit of that pain. So we'll go, go and have a look at that before you or, or when you're ready to move on.